Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It is Thursday, March 25th. And in this video, we're going to do an MJ sector review. And the topic is going to be Cresco Labs. So that'll be the focus of our video today and the results that came out this morning before market opened. So before we jump in, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. We'll go over some news and events and then we'll look at the Canadian and US MJ sectors. So Cresco Labs Q4 revenue increases 292% to 162 million. They had record revenue, record EBITDA, record quarterly revenue, record quarterly adjusted EBITDA, and record fourth quarter retail revenue of 68.8 million from 19 stores, an average of 3.6 million per store. So huge numbers there, but they actually missed on the EPS quite significantly. We were expecting positive 0.03 and it came in at negative 0.08, so huge miss there. That's why the, the um, stock was down, in my opinion. Charlotte's Webb's report, reported its earnings. Didn't really see that much gross, um, you know, growth over the last uh, total net revenue increase from 95 to 2.2 million to 94.6 million in 2019. So only about, you know, 0.6 million in a difference there. So not a huge, huge improvement but stock responded relatively well today they had a, even a loss of 20.2 million again not going to go over all this in detail and effort of time you can check it out for full details Virio health announced fourth quarter and full year 2020 financial results as well but stock was down and bit of a sell the news reaction again you can check that out on your own time alifia health reports 2020 year-end year results and quarterly revenue so 4.3 million positive adjusted ebitda in q4 2020 233% increase in quarter over quarter MJ net revenue. And there you go. So a little bit better numbers there from Alifia. Check out that in more detail if you want to know more. So MJ 2.0 products, Dent Canada's dried flower market. And that's to be expected. I personally have been purchasing a lot less, been purchasing a lot more of the beverages and the more edible style as I'm trying to get away from the combustion and the carcinogens that come along with that, and just overall better for your health. So we'll see how these categories continue to eat into that dried flower category. Taking a look at CL, so on the daily, we're just looking for a higher low compared to 1491, and we did hold that support today, and we have resistance up at 1780. So again, I think because of this EPS miss of about 289% surprise miss, that is what knocked the, the stock down today and the market was weak as well to begin the day. So we saw some strength into the end of the day. You can check out my broader market video that I just posted for some analysis on the broader market. But we'll be watching here, resistance at 1780. If we can hold this higher low and break above 1780, that confirms a daily uptrend and our weekly higher low is set at that point. But we have weekly support coming into play, like I said, at 1491. And then we also have uh, some weekly support at 1435. EMA 26 sitting at 1449, but we were on the verge of setting a weekly downtrend today and bears didn't get the follow through. Bulls stepped in and bought that dip quite impressively actually. And uh, we're, we're starting to see a little bit of momentum shift. A lot of names are in daily downtrends and it's all about this support here at 1491. If we lose that, we confirm a week, confirm a weekly downtrend which is the first time since March of 2020. So that would be notable. But keep in mind, we're starting to see some, you know, some just overall weakness. The RSI is trending lower here with lower highs and lower lows while we were trending higher with higher lows and higher highs. Now we're starting to see that catch up in the price. But again, no major damage done as long as we hold these higher lows and maintain the weekly uptrend. We were looking quite bearish there to end the week. And last week, we had the MACD and the stochastic bearish. And we're struggling with the 10-week moving average at 1765. On the weekly moving averages, we have the 50 crossing through the 100, which is generally a bullish sign. And on the daily time frame, we're getting resistance at the 50 day moving average. So 1773, that $17 area is very, very tough resistance at the moment. We bounced off EMA, or sorry, the 100 moving average today on the daily. So 
sitting at 1515. If we lose that 100 day moving average, we're likely heading down to the 200 at 1145. And the weekly VWAP holding held on the first attempt here and held again. And like I said, bulls fought off a weekly downtrend and we need to see a bounce into the end of the week here if burden of proof right now is on the bulls and we need to see we need to see them step in as bears are in short-term control and we also need to see bears follow through with a weekly downtrend and the overall broader market is going to have an impact on that as well so kbev vreo and cxxi led the decline today so vireo selling off after its earnings reaction cweb up 6.5 percent so investors and analysts seem to have liked the results there and up over 6% NBEV MJNA. But just taking a look at some of the big US MSOs, Cureleaf, seeing weekly consolidation. It's got key support here at 20 or 17.04, sorry. And then we also have a support level at 17.07 and EMA 26 at 16.76. So need to hold these higher lows, but the most important is going to be 1662. If we lose 1662, we lose the weekly uptrend. Taking a look at GTII, so GTII also on the verge of a weekly downtrend, so its support that needs to hold is 35.32. MSOS, key support it needs to hold is 40.80, so also a potential weekly downtrend on watch. And true leave weekly consolidation, but it's holding on to EMA 12. Nice support here in a visual guide and holding still in a weekly uptrend, holding these weekly higher lows. But again, we risk here of a potential, we had resistance at 67.45, we get as high as 66.90. So we risk a weekly downtrend here as well. So key support is going to be 51.90 on true leave. VREO, like I said, down almost 5%, could be heading to EMA 26, which is down at 272. We did have a weekly support level here at 275 as well. And today we got as low as 281. So nice play off weekly support there with a stop below even EMA 26. But lots of weakness. And again, just RSIs, we're getting extreme. I mean, take a look at TrueLeave on the monthly chart. Monthly RSI sitting at 84. We have been consolidated on the monthly since all the way back at $8. That is a long ways away. We're looking at about a 90% between 85 and 90%. So what's this what's kind of what's it going to look like when we start monthly consolidation and lose the weekly uptrend? We've got a monthly inside bar on watch, so we'll be watching that. But what happens if we lose the low of the previous month at 49.40? We could be heading down to the EMAs around 38 and 27. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if we ended up making our way back down to the 40 and the $30 area. But no major red flags at this point, and we know that we're not going to see significant consolidation and monthly consolidation unless we lose the weekly uptrend, both on TrueLeave and you know the overall broader market. If SPY loses its weekly uptrend, that's going to increase the odds that MJ sees its weekly consolidation. Doesn't mean that it has to, but the odds increase. So taking a look at the Canadian side, FIRE, TGOD, and XLY leading the decline. We had SNDL, HUGE, and OGI leading the bull list. I added to some SNDL today, some HEXO. Added to quite a few names today, actually, and posted in our group for private members. But an effort of time, just going to move on. So we'll take a look at the daily time frame. So daily consolidation underway on Aurora. We had support at 865. We got to 861. So we did lose that daily support. Aurora was standing out as definitely one of the weaker names. APHA still hasn't even tested its daily support. Still a long ways away. So that's a clear indication why APHA is clearly stronger. Still about 23% away from its support down at 1378. CGC closed at the high of the day. Daily consolidation, its support is sitting at 2804. Hexo, nice bounce there, closed at the high of the day. So Canadian MJ, notably, notable strength into the end of the day. 
and we have support at 558. OGI has support at 238. And a mini level here it looks like at 281, but not much support there or a pivot point. So we'll run with 238. SNDL had support at 93. I filled on SNDL, I think around 109 or 110 this morning. So added to that position. Tilray support coming into play potentially at 1823. VFF 1215 held as well. XLY support at 30 cents. But again, this is why we cautioned. We knew to be looking for daily consolidation and SNDL is a perfect example. From 93 cents, we ran about 90%. And I said, watch out for 10, 20, 30% pullbacks. And here we are, we're down over 30%, almost 40%. So huge, huge, huge pullback, but after a huge move, even big pullback, but a bigger move and a bigger bounce. So again, this isn't something that you should be taken by, you know, that should be surprising you. It should be, you know, it should be expected when we run 90%, and we have no support, we should expect at least a 10%, you know, between five and 10% of a pullback, upwards of even 50%, right? And then that's exactly what we got. I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, if they should be selling. And again, we need to flip that psychology around. A lot of people were asking about, you know, whether or not they should set stop losses. And I see a lot of people on YouTube in the comments as well, who are just getting frustrated saying, you know, the market was up, but we're still consolidating on MJ and why we have great earnings. Why is MJ consolidating? It's because we ran too hard, too fast, and it was a sell the news type of scenario. And like I said, we knew the, the overall broader market was weak. We saw weakness in the tech sector and in the S&P 500 and the overall market, and that is now affecting MJ. And we need to be cautious. We need to, now's the time where, you know, we, we need to be scouting entries, right? As we're getting close to support, that's when you want to be scouting entries. And a lot of people kind of have that psychology backwards. And the reason why is because of a thing called fear and greed. When you feel FOMO, you know, maybe you were going to enter, for example, if you were looking to enter Hexo at 558, a lot of people I know sold back then, right? Because this came after the huge move to $11. I told people to, to be careful. And then here we are down almost 50%. And people here are asking if they should sell. And that's when, you know, we're extended. And that, that's when you should actually be wanting to buy. And then here into strength is where you want to be scaling out into resistance. And then sure enough, we had that reversal. And the sell the news after the positive adjusted EBITDA news came out. And then straight into daily consolidation, like we knew to be watching out for. And again, here's where you wanted to be selling. If you were, you know, if you're rattled by this pullback, that tells me one of two things. You either enter too early or you enter too early with too much capital. So maybe you need to, uh, you know, fight FOMO. So maybe you're giving into FOMO. Maybe you need to scale in in multiple orders, maybe in three different orders or five different orders. Whatever you got to do to limit that risk, but just going all in here is generally not a good idea, especially since we were expecting daily consolidation and market weakness. It was not a good recipe for success. So we're going to leave it there. Again, all these names need to change hourly trends, just like the S&P 500 did today. Taking a look at Hexo. Hexo had the low, high, high or low, and trying to change its hourly trends. So... A lot of names setting up with hourly trend changes. CGC changed its hourly trend. So the more names that confirm hourly trend changes, the more confident we are that the daily bottoms are set and temporary bottoms are in for now. And we can be looking up to recent resistances up around 36 on CGC as an example. So we're going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wall for an MJ Sector review. Have yourself a fantastic night. And we'll talk to you tomorrow after market close. Take care, everyone.